everybody, I am Jared Ross, a genie vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to Latinos Get Their DNA Tested by Pero Like. Now, I've already watched a few DNA test videos from this channel, and I thought I had seen all of them, but then I realized that I apparently hadn't. So I figured I'd put this one on the list because I know a lot of people really have enjoyed the ones that I've done previously. Being that we're looking at Latinos getting their DNA tested, I think that we're going to see the typical Latino mixtures, which usually means a mixture of Native American or Indigenous American, a mixture of European, which is often Iberian, which is Spanish and Portuguese, although you can often find a lot of other European mixture as well. And then it's very common for people of Latino ancestry to also get African ancestry. And I've especially noticed that when it comes to people with Puerto Rican ancestry and Dominican Republic ancestry. I'm not really gonna say anything else. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. I'm not white. I'm a white man. 23andMe is the common one for a lot of these big companies. My both from El Salvador and my mom is from the- I believe I recognize him from BuzzFeed. I think his name is Curly. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe so. Capital, and my dad is from a place called Santa Tegla. I'm from the Dominican Republic. To my parents- So I'm guessing- the Capital, and my dad is from a place called Santa Tegla. I'm from- I'm guessing he's gonna get some percentage of African ancestry for one, like I mentioned before, a lot of people that I find who are from the Dominican Republic or have Dominican ancestry will have African readings. And especially uh, also those with um, Puerto Rican ancestry. I'm the Dominican Republic. My parents are both Mexican. My dad's from Mexico City. My mom's from Macucuca, Puebla. I'm fourth generation Mexican American. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, but my parents are both from Colombia. I expect this test to come back 100% Dominican. Where's my lineage? See, the, I mean, this video is what? This video is uh, six years old. So, I mean, this one's from back then, but that's the like common thing that I hear with these tests is they think that it's, oh, it's gonna tell me the country that I'm from, but it's, you know, it really does not do that, especially when you're talking about countries that are new world. Now, technically, it may, in a sense, if they've been able to decipher specifically indigenous Dominican DNA, they may be able to do that. Like I know some of these companies are able to say specifically indigenous Puerto Rican. So people with Puerto Rican ancestry often will get actually Puerto Rican. But usually what you'll get on the country level, like when you want it that specific, won't be in the percentages. It will be in what's often known as the communities. Uh, each site calls it different things. Not all the sites have it, but like Ancestry does it, um, where it and 23andMe does it, where it's like a genetic community. So they'll say, okay, well, you're this mixture of all this stuff, but based on your genetic matches, we see that you're actually matching people in Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic or Colombia or wherever. You know, unless it's really been able to have been deciphered, often it's in the community's part and you won't actually get a percentage for it. Hopefully that makes sense. From what's my bloodline like? One of my great grandparents had blue eyes. He had the nopal in la frente, but he got blue eyes. I know Mexicans come in all colors, shapes, and sizes. I want to know what's up. I think I'm down for any surprises. Fit to fill line. I think it's easier to take a piss test. <laughs> mm, so gross. Spit takes. I think that one was mixed with like a bugger. Okay, meet me napkins. All my secrets and my ancestors are in this bottle. Tell me who I am. Now for anyone that doesn't want to take these tests because you do not want to do one of these spit tube things, there are companies that do a swab instead of the spit tube. Family Tree DNA and MyHeritage do a swab instead of a spit tube. Um, also, if you do whole genome sequencing through Nebula, which is much more advanced DNA testing. So if you want like some of the best DNA testing, especially for like medical stuff, look into Nebula, which I actually have a video for. So if I remember, I'm going to link it up wherever, wherever it goes up there. All right, but let's continue. Where do I come from? <clears throat> Today we're getting our 23 and me results back and we're gonna find out our DNA makeup. I'm a little bit nervous, why am I nervous? I have no idea what to expect. I'm definitely super excited. I'm expecting to be mad Dominican, yo. Hi everyone, I'm Kasha. I'm a population geneticist with 23 and me um, and I work on all things ancestry related. Here to talk to you guys about your ancestry results. Woohoo! Okay, we'll start great. with the ancestry composition. You have about half of your DNA, looks like it's um, Native American. Woo! You also have. Um, 
Oh, cool. So they're showing the actual uh, chromosome browser that they have. So what this is showing is where the DNA is actually being read as the specific uh, population group. So like we see yellow here is Native American. So all those spots that are yellow, that's where they're reading, okay, this is coming from Native American ancestry. But notice too how each of these long bars, it's like they come in, it's like two, a pair. So a pair of chromosomes. So here's chromosome one. And one of these bars is from your mom. One is from your dad. Then chromosome two. One of these bars is from your mom and one is from your dad and so on and so forth. So when you hear 23 and me, it's because you have 23 pairs of chromosomes. They don't always show these, which is, you know, interesting, but like you can see this purple here, it's like this huge amount of purple, which is really standing out right there. But then you kind of also see it down here on that. And so I can't see what the purple is representative of here. I'm guessing it's going to be African ancestry. But like, it's really cool when you get things like that. And then you can pair it with what's known as DNA painting. So what that is, is when you then look at your DNA matches and let's say, okay, you have this purple spot right here. And then you look at your DNA match and you look at where are you matching them on your chromosome? And you notice that your sequence is matching up exactly with the, how that African chromosome is being read. That could be indicative, especially if it's matching on multiple spots, like oh, it's matching here and uh, down here, then that could mean that that match is through whatever African ancestry that Curly has. All right, let's continue. Europeans, about 40%, but most of that looks like it's coming from Iberia, so that's Very Spain typical. Portugal. Oh, see, okay, let's go back just a little bit. So yeah, so what they did is that someone clicked on that Iberian and then that highlighted all of the Iberian in Curly's DNA. So in the chromosome, so it breaks down all these little spots. But so like you could do that with any of them, like you could do the East Asian ancestry, you could do the broadly East Asian or like below what's likely that African. If you do that African ancestry, then it'll highlight that and pairing it with the DNA painting and your DNA matches, that's where you can really then take this DNA test to a new level. So that's one of the reasons why whenever I react to these videos and stuff, that's why I'm always like, it's the most genealogically useless part of the, the test, like, or it's the least genealogically useful. That's kind of the most positive, optimistic way of using it because it's genealogically useful, but it's the least genealogically useful, at least by itself. But as a tool in your tool belt to advance your DNA testing or not your DNA test, but to advance and expand your family tree, it can be useful, but it's very, very little bits of use. But this is one of those things that you can use where if you do know, like your chromosome browser here, like Ancestry has something similar. They just rolled it out recently. Family Tree DNA, I think has it. And I think MyHeritage has this as well. So you can isolate where in your chromosomes or certain ancestries coming from. And then like, let's say maybe you have a bunch of second cousins from a specific side of your family who have tested too. You can look and see where are you matching those cousins and then wherever those cousins are matching, maybe you'll notice that, oh, you know, that weird 3% whatever that I got that I wasn't expecting, it's actually matching on the same spots that my cousins are and they're getting that reading too. Well, all of a sudden now that small percentage reading where you're like, I never heard of that. Now, not only do you have a better confidence that it might be true, but also because you're matching with it with these second cousins, you know, okay, well, the great grandparents that I share with these second cousins, that must be where that ancestry is coming through. So that's how you can really take these tests to a new level in expanding your tree. Let's continue. Spain and Portugal. Portugal, España. 1% Ashkenazi. So that means I'm Jewish, yeah? Wait, but 1%, does that make me like enough? No, that probably is what. Now the whole question of Jew, this is a weird thing because it gets conflated in the whole ethno-religious thing and the fact that Jewish defines multiple things in a sense of Jewish defines an ethnic group of people who no matter what the religion are, they are ethnically tied to a group of people that are defined as Jews. And then you also have the religious part where it's a religion that people can go in and out of. People that are born Jewish can then denounce a religion and decide to become Catholic, or people that are born Catholic or Muslim or whatever can then convert to Judaism if they want. But they won't have Jewish DNA because they aren't ethnically Jewish. So what I say to people when this question comes up of, well, so am I Jewish? And the truth is, is that the best way to answer this is to just say that you have, or 
if you can prove it at least, 1% is a questionable thing, but assuming that it's true, you would say that you have Jewish ancestry. It doesn't necessarily make you Jewish, but it does make you partially Jewish in the ethnic sense, but only a small percentage of you. So it's just, it's an ancestry. So it's like, you know, if I have a very distant ancestry to royalty, which I do, doesn't make me royal but it does mean that i have royal ancestry and most everyone in the world that has any sort of european ancestry they descend from royals and they have royal ancestry but it doesn't make them royal and in my view at least it's kind of the same thing with judaism just because you have jewish ancestry doesn't necessarily make you jewish in a religious way or a halakhically religious way which is a big part of it where people talk about the whole you know you have to be jewish if your mom's jewish but i think that if he were able to find where his jewish ancestry is in his family assuming that this is truly jewish ancestry and not a misread then that you know he, he can definitely say he has jewish ancestry and at one percent assuming it's coming from one recent common ancestor although being of a latin ancestry it's very possible that he has a lot of distant jewish ancestry but if it's coming from one ancestor then that would be the equivalent of maybe a fourth or a fifth great grandparent or further out so you're looking at pretty far back there but let's continue. Like a little flash in the pan. Got a little bit of Sub-Saharan African. Like yeah, so you see it's that purple. So the 2.3% North African. She said Sub-Saharan Africa. Oh, wait, I'm, I totally skipped over the Sub-Saharan that was right over it. Yeah, he has Sub-Saharan African. <laughs> I completely missed that. I was like, wait a second. Why is she saying North African is Sub-Saharan? That's not right. But yeah, so he's 3.5%. So he can isolate that and look and see where is that African ancestry coming from and then maybe figure out um, if it's coming from one specific side or not. Like three and a half percent. Yeah. Oh. I wasn't expecting to see that. Did you have any idea? No, I had no idea. I'm surprised that they wouldn't be expecting to see that with anyone with a Latin American ancestry, even if you have Mexican ancestry or something like that where maybe it's not as common it's still not super unusual although i guess it's not like super common either but i i don't know that's beautiful so if you look at um about half of your dna in the european a large chunk of that is iberian so that's based in portugal mm. um, and well one percent ashkenazi uh what's that the jewish honey you also have a large amount of native american ancestry looks like about 36 well, very typical that's so cool i, I mean it, it's pretty much in line with what i thought my grandfather was always very proud of our spanish heritage but i knew there was definitely some indigenous blood on both sides so that's so cool to see it like broken down that way though. Let's go ahead and take a look at your ancestry composition report. Oh my god. So your ancestry, 31% Native American. You also have about half coming from different parts of Europe. You've got like 40% Southern European, about 3% Italian. Were you expecting that? I didn't know. <laughs> you do have some African as well. What? Yeah. So I'm seeing about 3.5% Sub-Saharan African ancestry, which looks like mostly West African ancestry. There we go, ancestry report. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling he's going to have one of the higher percentages of Native American ancestry. Okay. Um, so what I'm seeing right now is um, East Asian and Native American. 74.7. 74.7. European is at 19.3. <laughs> so you are pretty close to three quarters Native American. Pretty quite high. Wow. So a lot of Native American ancestry. <laughs> but then you also have a little bit of Ashkenazi. They keep hitting on the small percent of Ashkenazi and they're skipping over a lot of the other stuff. I mean, I guess they're not skipping over a lot. Of it. They're kind of going through each one. But yeah, I mean... All of these, te they always hit on the Ashkenazi Jewish with this stuff. But the thing is, is that for anyone with Iberian ancestry, including people of Latin American ancestry, they often are going to get Jewish readings because of the history of Jews in Iberia. And I mean, Jews have been in Iberia since Roman times. And over those, thou well, what has it been like 1700 years, I think, or 1800 years since the first documented Jews in Iberia, from what I can remember, 
it's, you know, there's been a lot of times where the Jewish population has assimilated for different reasons into the non-Jewish population. And most especially, as many of us know, in 1492, with the Alhambra Decree and the inaction of the Inquisition, a lot of Jews converted. Then, of course, in Portugal, years later, when Portugal enacted their Inquisition, which was much harsher, then you have all these Jews that are then becoming assimilated into these different populations that are not Jewish, most especially the Catholic population, because, you know, that was the whole point they wanted to make spain one big catholic nation and then portugal wanted to marry into that throne so hey we'll enact our inquisition too why not no one expects the portuguese inquisition but especially with all of that happening in the 15th century and most especially before that before the inquisition there were a lot of jews during the Reconquista, when the Catholics would take over an area from the Muslims, and then there would be huge amounts of forced conversions, or a lot of Jews would convert because, you know, they needed to, to survive, and that was the best way to. And so you have, for hundreds of years, before anyone even made it to the Americas, of Jews assimilating and mixing into the Iberian population, which then led to most people with Iberian ancestry to have these small percentages of Jewish DNA. And I kind of wish that they would explain that more in these videos, because I mean, whenever I see these BuzzFeed videos or the Paro like videos or the, I, I don't know, there's been a few other companies of these that I've watched where they do the DNA test for, you know, multiple people at their company, and they always harp on these small percentages of Ashkenazi or this or that, and then they never talk about the history of the connections or what it could actually mean. They usually just leave it at a, so you're a Ashkenazi Jew, you're Jewish, honey. But then again, I guess with these kinds of things, they can't go too in-depth, otherwise they'd lose their audience because their audience doesn't like that in-depth stuff. And I should know because when I get really in depth and stuff, sometimes it's like views go down. They do not want to watch that. 1.1% Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. Hey, this is, yeah, this is insane. Like I'm looking at myself and I'm a collage of colors. Oh, sh I'm West African. I knew that. Sh That's where all the drums come from the Dominican. Like I was saying, because of that Dominican, I was expecting him to have a larger percentage of African, and we can see that here, 33.1%. And if they had anyone who had Puerto Rican ancestry, I would find I'd probably expect something similar as well. And Panamanian. I think from from what I've seen from people from Panama, there's there's a lot of African ancestry there too. If you have over 50% European ancestry. Oh wait, time out. Where is that at? Hold on, 50. Hold on, time out. I'm 53% European, 51. So he's a white girl. 51%, yeah. So I'm like more white. I mean, pigmentation is really complicated. It's controlled by a lot of different genes across your DNA. You know, it goes to show why you could have variation, for example, in pigmentation in the same family. Man, it's, it's pretty cool to be like, yo, like I'm part of like all over the place. Thanks, yeah. all right. I'm feeling good. Oh, it sounded happy. fun. We're not different. All of us, we're all the same. All these components. Especially Pete, people from Latin America, they are literally the culmination of everyone from around the world. And that's like, when it comes to DNA testing for anybody of a Latin American ancestry, whether it's Central America, South America, the Caribbean or whatever, you will always find these mosaics of ancestries because they are such a mixture. And you will find certain population groups that will have different amounts. Kind of like I said, Puerto Rican, Dominican, you find a higher percentage of those African readings. I often find with people from like Mexico and uh, Brazil and Colombia, um, they will often have much more higher Native American readings. But it, you know, it, it, I think you're gonna find people in any community where you're gonna find someone in a Puerto Rican community, someone in a Brazilian community, someone in a Mexico community, someone from Panama, someone from Guatemala, and they're going to get almost the same mixture. I mean, look at everyone in this video. They're all coming from very different communities, even though they're all Latino. They're all from very different communities that have, you know, different histories, different cultures, and they're still getting these very somewhat similar mixes of, 
European, African, Native American, and 1% Ashkenazi Jewish. <laughs> really goes to show with these DNA tests. There's only five seconds left. So let's see what the, what goes on. To make up a Latino. At the end of the day, deep down inside, well, we all bleed red. Especially in like Latino culture, we're very about our like micro identities and that's great, but it's so neat to see that we're all so interrelated. It's nice to know that we're part of the world all around us. It's nice to know that we're home. Knowing this information breaks down the borders a little bit for me. And we have genetic makeup that's around the world. I'm brown and I'm proud. All right, well, I thought that was actually a uh, pretty good video. The one thing I always worry about with the videos from these companies like BuzzFeed-like companies is that sometimes it's so oversimplified and unexplained that it leaves things said that are misleading. That was worded really oddly. Basically, sometimes when I've seen these videos, it's like they'll say something that's like, oh yeah, you've got this, so it must mean this, when it's like, no, there's a bunch of interpretations. And they didn't really do that as much in this. And I really did like that when they're showing the DNA results, they're actually showing the uh, chromosome browser view. So you could see that breakdown because a lot of these videos, they won't actually show that. And then I think one other thing I was happy not to see is that sometimes when I watch these videos, with people that are like, you know, oh, I'm gonna be 100% Dominican. And then they get it back and they're like, wait, I'm European. And then they get super sad about it or they like, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And you know, I, te I definitely understand where that's coming from. But for a lot of people of European ancestry, they have all of these very interesting lives that have nothing to do with the horrific histories that are you know for the hundreds of years in those areas granted that sometimes it can be representative of that but like one of the family trees that i'm currently working on for my youtuber series is for cynthia reyes who's from mexico and i don't want to give too much away but they actually have some fairly recent european ancestry that migrated in the 19th century and not only that we actually have documents in jalisco mexico of the family Wait, maybe I shouldn't have said Anyway. <laughs> but because of that, they actually have a very high percentage of Southern European DNA. So that's a very, that's been a very interesting line to be able to trace out and try to work on. Although it is difficult, let me tell you. But overall, I was pretty content with this video. But if you want to see me react to other videos just like this, be sure to check out this one right here. Thank you to my Patreon patrons and YouTube members.